So I don't know about you, but every year my wife and I like to get a real tree for Christmas. It's usually my job to keep the tree watered, so that means at some point every year, I forget to water it for a day or two. Unfortunately, it's all downhill once the trunk starts to dry up, so it pretty quickly goes from looking like this to looking like this. 2018 was especially rough. So this year, to keep our tree fresh and to cut down on cleanup at the end of the year, I came up with a simple DIY Christmas tree water level sensor. This thing will let me know when it's time to add more water and I can make it as obnoxious or as subtle as I want. Alright, so here's a rundown on the materials that you'll need. If you're a nerd like me, you got a bunch of this stuff lying around the house, but if not, I'll be posting links in the video description so you can find it on Amazon. There's a kit with a bunch of different components that you can use for all kinds of projects, including this one. And there's an Arduino board that you can program yourself and do all kinds of stuff with. So be sure to check those links out. So here we have the breadboard for making the circuit connections. And then we have the breadboard power supply. This will power our circuit. And you'll need an Arduino Nano or an Arduino Uno. If you have an Uno lying around, that'll work. But I'd recommend using the Nano for this project. And then here we have the male jumper wires, as well as some female to male jumper wires. And then you'll need a 9 volt battery and connector, or a DC power adapter with a barrel jack. And you'll need a buzzer, a transistor, and two resistors. And then you'll need some aluminum foil to make the sensor contacts. And then electrical tape is always handy to have, just in case. Sometimes you can find cheaper Arduino nano boards that are not pre-assembled. And if you go that route, you'll need a soldering iron and some solder. I'll be posting a link to a good uh, soldering tutorial in the video description, so go ahead and check that out if you're going to go that route. So now I'll draw a circuit diagram. We'll use an MPN transistor to amplify the sensor reading to the Arduino. And we'll use a pull-down resistor on the emitter side to ground, and a pull-up resistor to 5 volts on the collector side. And then we'll connect our sensor to 5 volts and the base pin of the transistor. I'll be using these values for the resistors, but you can try a bunch of different values and see what works for you. The transistor is a 2N2222. And then finally, the emitter pin will be going to our, uh, to our input pin on the Arduino. All right, so here comes the fun part. We'll start by putting the breadboard power supply on the breadboard. This will provide power to uh, the plus and the minus rails on our breadboard on the side. And then we'll place the Arduino board. This is why the nano boards are handy, because you can put them directly on a breadboard like this. So now we're going to use some jumper wires to power the Arduino. So positive goes to the end pin on the Arduino, and negative goes to the ground pin on the Arduino. So now I'm hooking up the transistor with the pull-down and pull-up pins on the emitter and collector, respectively. And then this blue wire is going to go from the emitter pin to uh, the D2 pin, or the input pin on the Arduino. And then I'm hooking up the buzzer. So uh, one wire on the buzzer is going to the negative rail, and one wire is going to uh, the output pin on the Arduino. So that yellow wire you can see is going to the D12 pin on the Arduino, and the blue wire is going to the negative rail. So finally, I can hook up the sensor wires. So orange goes to the base pin of the transistor, and yellow goes to the positive rail on the breadboard. Now I'm going to hook it up to the computer with the USB cable and start programming. I'll post a link to the Arduino code in the video description so you can check that out there and just copy and paste it and upload to your board. You can see here I'm doing some troubleshooting which while it's important is not terribly exciting so I'm going to go ahead and skip that. So I have this programmed to chirp the buzzer every time the pros break contact. So if we run out of water the buzzer will start chirping and uh, it'll do that every 15 seconds which is not enough to be super annoying but just enough to notice. So now I'll tear off a couple strips of aluminum foil. These will be wrapped around the probes to make it more effective in the water 
and then take your uh, male to female jumpers and plug those in where you had the other probes before. So this will just get you a little bit more reach and if you need even more you can get another set of jumpers. So now I'm wrapping the foil tightly around the jumpers. This will just help the probes get a better electrical contact with the water. You can see I'm poking the jumper through the foil and then wrapping it around tightly to get a good grip. This will keep it from falling off. So now that I have the sensor probes hooked up, it's time to test with a bowl of water. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Alright, well now all that's left is to set it up on the Christmas tree, so I'm going to call that a wrap for this project. If you have any questions about the project, I'd be happy to help out, so go ahead and leave a comment. Also, let me know what you think of the video. I'd love to get your feedback. If you like this project and want to see more like it in the future, please hit me up with a like and subscribe to the channel. That would really help me out. So thanks for watching, and I'm wishing you a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.